Welcome. In this video, I want to talk about Dev Home, a new Microsoft application built by the same team that made Windows Terminal and Winget. In this video, I will do an overview of the current features as the app is currently in preview and also have it as sort of a review of the application and whether or not I find it useful or recommend it. To install Dev Home, you can just Google it and you will find the Microsoft documentation page for it where you have the install Dev Home preview button, which will just take you, it's a link, it will just take you to the Microsoft Store app. You can just find it there alternatively. I already have it installed, so I'll launch it. Your first start will look something similar to this, where you go to the dashboard view and it's empty by default. Here we can add widgets. By default, the built-in widgets are basic resource, resource monitoring widgets basically for CPU, memory, network and GPU. If I add one of these, you'll see that they're similar to what you get in Task Manager where you can do the same resource monitoring or what you will basically get in Visual Studio for example if you run and debug an application. Nonetheless, you can add these to monitor your CPU, memory, network and GPU. And that could be useful for development. You also have an SSH keychain, which I currently do not have. You can use it to access remote computers with SSH. You would store your SSH credentials here so that you can easily uh, just open a terminal to your remote computers, frequently used for servers, for example. So that is useful. Now, these are the built-in widgets and they're not like extremely useful. Uh, they can be found in different places in your OS, task manager, and in your ID most likely. But the good thing is that uh, extensions can be added to Dev Home. So these widgets could potentially include third party widgets in the future that could be very useful. Right now, there is actually an extension available. If you go to extensions, there's only one extension available and that's the Dev Home GitHub extension. I can get that from the Microsoft Store as you can see. Currently these extensions are Microsoft Store applications, let's say. They are installed from the Microsoft Store and I just added the GitHub extension. What it does is it integrates GitHub into Dev Home very well and now I can add GitHub widgets here. That's one of the integration parts. Uh, the other one is with the repositories, I'll show you later. But for example, I can see issues here. Let's open some GitHub repository. I will search for Monaco editor. That's Microsoft's editor used in Visual Studio Code. And it's open source, it has its repository right here. I'll copy the, uh, I don't actually need the link to the repository, but the GitHub link, because this will show issues. It found the Monaco editor repo and I can pin it now. And I have my issues here. We do have some customization options here. We can choose small, medium or large, which just changes the height of the widget. That's not very useful here with uh, the resource usage built-in widgets, but it is useful in issues because we have a scroll bar. The GitHub widgets also include pull requests. I can add the same repository and see all of its pull requests. That would load a little bit uh, longer because there are more pull requests in the Monaco editor. And I can also add widgets that are related to me. I can see my mentions, my assigned tasks, and the reviews requested by me. A lot of companies use GitHub uh, extensively and utilize the issues and pull requests. Uh, they also uh, use the mentions, assignments, and reviews in GitHub. So that could be useful for a developer uh, to have your dashboard here with uh, multiple repositories so that you can monitor what you need to do, your issues, pull requests, etc. I see how that could grow, especially if we get useful extensions in the future by other, uh, for other third party applications, not just GitHub. I could imagine, for example, a Jira integration, many others. Okay, let's now go to the machine configuration tab. Here we have multiple uh, items. I'll just close these notifications. So let's focus on quick steps first, because the setup development environment is an end-to-end -end setup that aggregates these three basically. First of all, we have a shortcut to the other dev drive 
functionality introduced with the latest version of Windows 11. That's a pretty cool thing. If I open the Microsoft documentation for it, dev drives allow you to create a virtual hard drive on your Windows 11 machine, which actually use a different file system, not NTFS, but REFS, which is a new file system that Microsoft developed. And these dev drives are supposed to be used so specifically for your source code, basically. Source code and cache files, they are also a little bit more loose in terms of security. They treat you as a power user. So the Windows Defender uh, problems some developers have with compile times will not happen. Um, you would also get performance benefits when you use them uh, for their purpose, which is basically storing your repositories there and your code base. That's pretty cool. To set up the drive, you basically go to disks and volumes or uh, just from the dev home shortcut, which takes you right here. The top section, here is your basically your hard drives and above it, you can create a virtual hard drive or a dev drive. Now you can learn more about dev drives or create a dev drive and you have two options to build a volume on a new virtual hard, hard disk or resize an existing volume. I will create a new virtual hard drive. I will call it dev drive. It will be in my C real volume and I want it to be 50 gigabytes. The cool thing is that uh, you can actually select a fixed size or a dynamically expanding virtual hard drive. So this will basically grow to its maximum size as you write data to it. It wouldn't take 50 gigabytes when you initialize it. You have two possible uh, hard disk formats, VHD and VHDX. By default, you get the VHDX. Uh, this one is, uh, as it says, more resilient to power failure and supports maximum file sizes that are larger. So I'll go with the default and I'll choose the guide partition table and initialize my drive. Now I have to label it. I'll just label it dev drive and select the D letter. It's 50 gigabytes. In advanced settings, I have folder to mount to and some minor settings here. So I'll format and mount my drive. And here I have my new dev drive with its new file system. If I open it and select properties, you see that the file system is REFS actually. Now the good thing is, after I added my dev drive, I can now use it in dev home. The next feature it has is to clone repositories. You can add a repository here and type its URL. A very annoying thing is that if you select an SSH URL from GitHub, which most people use these days, uh, they're still not allowed in dev home. I don't know, they might allow them in future versions. Right now you can use HTTPS. Or alternatively, if you need your repositories, which most developers do, you can actually uh, go to account and here you can search for your repositories. Here's one of my apps, which I'm working on and I can add that. Here you can add multiple repositories at once. This is when this becomes kind of useful because just cloning one repository is much faster in the terminal, just paste and but if you want to clone like 50 repositories from your GitHub account, you can just select them here and add them right here in this view. And then when you click next, you can, it gives you a summary of what you set up and then you clone them, which is very nice. Then it asks me to go to the dashboard. Not sure why it's not very useful going to the dashboard at this stage. Now I don't have a view of my repositories here. I can just clone, as you can see, there's no, um, my expectation after cloning them was that there was going to be some aggregate view of repositories you have on your PC or something like that. But that's not the case. If I open my dev drive, my repositories are right here. Um, this, in my opinion, by itself is not very useful. It's only useful when you set up a new dev environment and you want to clone multiple repositories for a person. And I'll talk about that in the end to end setup as well. But the other feature this application offers is install applications from Winget. So here you have some popular developer applications and you can install them. 
it's not um, not particularly special. You can install PowerShell. You can select multiple apps from here. I would, for example, select these PowerShell and Node.js, and I can bulk install them from Winget. Here I have to agree, and it will install my applications. Ask it forward after it completes the installation. Okay, I got my two apps installed. I see a summary of what was installed, and there were no issues. This is basically a graphical user interface for Winget. It is useful, again, only if you're setting up your development environment from scratch, you know exactly what you need, select it, install it at once. That's useful. And on that note, here in machine configuration, um, you can also do this end-to-end -end setup, which is exactly what I mean. If um, this is a new system or you have a new colleague at work, here you can do a bulk setup for him. For example, add a couple of uh, repository, repositories here and select them. Then go to the next step, add a few apps, these for example. And then on the next step, you see a summary. You need these repositories, these applications, and you can set up the whole development environment. This is useful. I think it's a nice interface to do that setup, which you would usually need to do manually at a couple of places. You can also do that with a configuration file, which is even better. Uh, you have to specify a Winget YAML file for that, uh, which you can see how you can do in the Microsoft documentation. Winget configuration. Um, here you have an article, how to alter a Winget configuration file. It's not hard per se, it's just a YAML configuration file and the entire documentation is here in the Microsoft Docs. You basically have a few capabilities. You can specify dependencies, uh, requirements like the OS version and different resources to install at once. So that could be handy if you're an organization and you want the same configuration and development environment for all of your employees or you want to make the life of fellow developers easier at work and you want to make this configuration file for them. But yeah, um, I mean, I mentioned a couple of times that this isn't terribly useful, just cloning repositories and installing applications compared to a terminal. Um, the reality is if you already use the dashboard uh, for GitHub issues, just an overview of your repositories and uh, tasks, um, and you have this dev home open, I would actually say that it's handy to be able to even install a single app from here. Like um, that's already open, you're here, uh, it's kind of quick. So I, I don't know if I would switch to a terminal to always install apps if I use this uh, application already. And that's the point of it. Um, having it open all the time, using it as your dashboard developer application on Windows. And I think to that end, it seems to be a good start. Um, and right now it's not a must have for any developer, but in the future, if there are more extensions and maybe features in machine configuration, I would say it might become a pretty good developer hub application on Windows. So, so far I'm, I'm pretty happy with this app. We'll see what the future holds for it. With this, I'll wrap today's video. I think Dev Home has potential to turn into the dashboard for developers on Windows, which it's meant to be by its design, but it's not yet there. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when another video is released. Take care.